The StreamSets Data Collector is a fully open source Apache licensed tool for building and developing data ingest pipelines for the big data ecosystem. It's a drag and drop tool for designing, for testing, for operating and maintaining these sorts of big data ingest pipelines. On the right hand side, you can see a lot of the different connectors we provide out of the box for building these pipelines. You can pull data from anywhere like flat files, RESTful endpoints, relational systems, or even many different messaging queues. And that data can be sent to really anywhere within the Hadoop ecosystem. HDFS, HBase, Hive, even Kudu are supported out of the box. And along the way, we have a wide variety of processors, uh, transformations, minor tweaks you can make to the data as it's coming in to make sure that it's ready for consumption on the other side. You can do things like mask and anonymize personally identifiable information, as well as geolocation, uh, or even any custom transformations you may want to do. This particular use case is built around connected car data. Uh, connected cars are a major use case within the Internet of Things ecosystem, and the reason is that there's a lot of information that cars can generate while they're on the road. And that information can be used from everything from uh, predictive maintenance by auto manufacturers to really being able to provide personalized pricing uh, by insurance providers and, and things like that. And so this, this data is very valuable. It's very useful to, to get into a place where it can be processed and analyzed uh, in aggregate. And so what we see here is a pipeline designed to enable uh, the ingest and analysis of connected car information. So we've got Kafka acting as kind of an IoT gateway. Uh, you can see that everything here is going to be very configuration driven. So we're able to bring in data very easily. All you have to do is specify where the Kafka cluster is uh, and the topic that you want to bring that data into. In this case, I'm also sending that data into another Kafka topic, but I'm also sending it into Cloudera Search. Uh, where I can look at it through a Hue dashboard. One of the nice things about stream sets is that when you're designing your pipelines, you don't actually have to specify all the different fields that are coming in. We recognize that the data that you're working with can evolve, it can change over time, and so we wanted to provide a solution that can evolve with the data. So instead of just specifying all the individual fields, we just define what type of data we're bringing in. Here, for example, I'm working with JSON data, but all I have to do is specify that I've got multiple JSON objects coming in. And what that gets me is a very general way of defining my transformations. As I'm building these, you can see that I'm doing things like, here I'm, de I'm defining a unique identifier for this solar document. And specifically, I'm defining that I want to bring in the VIN and concatenate it with the timestamp. But I don't have to just specify, you know, get me field one or get me this, uh, the data that's found by this regular expression. I can literally use the, the field names that I want to work with. And this is something that we refer to as intent-driven development. You worry about the, the fields that you want to work with, and you don't worry about the fields that you don't need to work with. Now, what this gets you is even more than the ability to, to define transformations very easily, we can also now go and specify uh, data quality checks or business rules. So here, for example, I've defined that the VIN and the timestamp fields are required. If they don't exist, I want to be able to mark these as error records. Or I may want to go even further than that and say that if the VIN number is empty, is an empty string, I also don't want to use it because I can't guarantee uniqueness of this record and I'm not going to be able to use it downstream. So this solves a problem that we refer to as data drift, which is really the unexpected or spontaneous change in your data. Uh, it, it can manifest in a lot of different ways, anywhere from new fields showing up or anomalous data showing up in, uh, in the fields. And so that's something that StreamSets really aims to solve. Going on here, you'll see other different types of transformations doing things like field type conversions going from strings to doubles along, you know, things along those lines, as well as being able to do custom transformations. If you have a custom transformation that you want to encode, you can very easily do that with our uh, Python, JavaScript, or Groovy support. So here, for example, I'm deriving a, a number of uh, types of uh, of events that, that I'm processing. So for example, if someone is departing a lane and their turn signal is off, I want to mark that as an illegal lane departure. And so that's what I'm doing there. Beyond this, StreamSys is not only a design UI, but it's also a testing UI. So as I'm going through and building these pipelines, I may want to actually test this out. And I can do that using our preview mode, which is going to allow me to actually go in and see some of the data that's waiting to be processed. 
and I can go in to see what fields are there. I can see exactly what data I've got to work with, and I can step through from stage to stage to see how that data is being processed. Here, for example, you'll be able to see there's that VIN number and that timestamp being concatenated together, or over here, I'll be able to see the type conversions happening going from things like strings to doubles. So it's a really nice way of testing, uh, really just making sure that your pipeline works the way you expect it to before you ever actually start it up. But once you're ready to put it into production, you can start it up because StreamSense is also the execution framework, and you're going to see data start to flow through. So here you'll see a number of things going on. Uh, you can see all of the different charts that are starting to populate, all of the different performance information that we provide, which is all available through the UI, but also through JSON or JMX endpoints. Everything that you can do through the UI is also automatable through the uh, through a CLI or a REST interface. So you can export these pipelines, you can version them, you can re-import them into your production environment, uh, you can extract the metrics into another monitoring solution, all those sorts of things. You'll also notice some other things going on here. So I've got a, a number of different uh, processors here. You can see at a fine grain how that that processor is working. For example, here, this event type evaluator is filtering out most of the data just so that I'm looking at only the events I really care about. I can also see there are counters in, on some of these stages, and these are showing me where there are errors. For example, over here on this solar destination, I was actually having issues with the locations of these events. A number of these events were showing up as having happened in the middle of the ocean, and I didn't really understand why until I uh, applied a precondition. I defined a precondition to specify a bounding box around the latitudes and the longitudes. And what I found was that the, the error records, the records that were causing problems, had zeroed out latitudes and longitudes, which would make sense since that's in the middle of the Atlantic. So what this give, gave me the ability to do was really get runtime debugging information to really understand what was going on. But even more, this data is not just thrown away. It's sent off to an error stream. So the metadata here, the error code, the error message, all of this information is passed off to an error stream, which could be another stream sets pipeline, a Kafka topic. Uh, it could be a flat file for manual triage. And it gives me the ability to build in my error handling logic as the data is being integrated so that as error records are produced, I can automatically reconcile those errors, get them reintegrated into the downstream system quickly uh, without preventing me from continuing to ingest the good data. So it gives me a lot of flexibility uh, to understand the performance of my systems. I'm also doing a lot of alerting here. So over here, I was looking at some characteristics of the data itself. In fact, here, I was looking at a data rule I had specified where I was looking for records where the speed was less than zero. That's not just uh, someone moving in reverse here, that's just bad data. And so what I've got here is the ability to look at that to understand how frequently this is happening. And I also have some examples of this to look at so I can better understand this data. So in addition to being able to alert on conditions in the data, we can obviously also alert on characteristics of the pipelines uh, if the pipeline is not, uh, is not hitting throughput requirements or uh, if there's a lot of errors, all of those sorts of things can generate alerts. So what's happening downstream in this pipeline is that I'm sending data into a solar index and I've got on another tab a hue dashboard which is actually going to show me where those events are occurring and as I refresh this you're going to be able to see the numbers over here increasing because I've got this data populating this solar uh, and Cloudera search index automatically uh, in real time. So it's giving me a lot of visibility into what's actually going on in the, uh, in the downstream system faster than I would have normally been able to, to work with it in a uh, batch only system. So all of this is continuous, it's all going in real time and really giving me uh, low latency feedback. So that is the StreamSets data collector. Thank you and I hope this was helpful.